Well, thank you very much, everybody, for being here in Bedminster. Uh, we've had a lot of work. We've done a lot of work. They're renovating the White House. Uh, it's a long-term uh, project, and they approved it years ago. And I said, well, I guess this would be a good place to be in the meantime. So uh, they're doing a lot of work at the White House. Uh, I miss it. I would like to be there, but this is a good way of doing it. Uh, we have some very outstanding people uh, with us. And I'll make a few remarks. This is largely about prison reform and other subjects, but largely about prison reform. So I want to thank the governors, Matt Bevan, Phil Bryant, Doug Burnham, uh, Nathan Deal, and John Bell Edwards for being here today. Uh, been friends of mine. We've been, uh, uh, I could say, in wars, but we've been on the same side of the wars. That's always good. I want to thank you also to Attorney General Pam Bondi and Ken Paxton. And Ken just filed a very interesting uh, lawsuit, which I think is going to be very successful. I hope it's going to be successful. I also want to recognize Secretary Rick Perry and Secretary Alex Acosta. Thank you both. Rick, thank you very much. Yes, we are uh, doing some great things with health care, Alex. And you're doing some wonderful things with energy. I hope that project comes along that we're talking about. It's going to help a lot of people. A lot of jobs are going to be created. So I know you're working on it. I look forward to hearing from each of you about your experiences with prison reform and the lessons that we've learned. I know how, Matt, in particular, you have been working so hard. Phil, you've been working long and hard on it, harder than anyone would know. But uh, I can tell you my administration feels very, very strongly about it. One of the single most important things we're doing is to help former inmates in creating jobs. We're creating so many jobs that former inmates, for the first time, are really getting a shot at it because they weren't sought, and now they are being sought because our unemployment rate is so low, historically low, 50 years. Now our economy is booming, businesses are hiring, and recruiting workers that were previously overlooked, they're being hired. It's a great feeling. It's a great thing that we've all accomplished. We've created a lot of jobs in the States, and uh, I guess I've helped you a lot in, uh, on a national basis. We've created 3.9 million more jobs since Election Day, so almost 4 million jobs, which is unthinkable. If I would have said that during the campaign, only a few of the people around this table would have believed me, but they would have. Uh, 3.9 million jobs since Election Day. That's pretty incredible. We've added more than 400,000 manufacturing jobs since the election. Manufacturing employment is now growing faster than at any time than it has in three decades, over 30 years. Through the Pledge of America's Workers, launched just last month, almost 5 million Americans will receive enhanced career training and opportunities. And I want to thank Ivanka Trump for having done an incredible job on that. She's really worked hard on it. It's something very important to her. I've uh, really, and I've said it to a lot of people, Jared, I want to thank Jared for uh, what's happening on prison reform, because you've really been leading it, something very close to your heart. And as I've said before, we hire Americans. We want to hire and treat our Americans fairly. You know, for many years, jobs have been taken out of our country. We've lost our businesses. We've lost the hiring abilities that we had. Not anymore. Now those companies are coming back. They're coming roaring back to your state, to your state. They're coming back faster than anyone thought even possible. Our first duty is to our citizens, including those who have taken the wrong path but are seeking redemption and a new beginning. That's people that have been in prison, and they come out and they're having a hard time. They're not having such a hard time anymore. We passed the First Step Act through the House, and we're working very hard in the Senate to refine it and pass it into law. We think we'll be successful in that regard. The bill expands vocational educational programs to eligible federal inmates so that more of them can learn a trade. And that's what we're doing. We're teaching them trades. We're teaching them different things that they can put into good use and put into use to get jobs. I recently met with Chairman Grassley and other members of Congress to discuss the bill. We also agreed that we must be tough on crime, especially on criminals and trafficking of drugs and lots of other trafficking. We have a trafficking problem, including human trafficking. We're very, very tough on that, and uh, that's going to remain uh, tough or even tougher. We must strengthen community bonds with law enforcement, including cities like Chicago, that have been an absolute and total disaster. Uh, we'll be talking about Chicago today, because that is something that, in terms of our nation, 
nobody would believe it could be happening. They had 63 incidents last weekend and 12 deaths. Uh, that's uh, bad stuff happening. And probably, uh, I guess you have to take from the leadership. Let's go bad leadership. There's no reason in a million years that something like that should be happening in Chicago. We want every child to grow up in a safe neighborhood, surrounded by families that are loving and helpful and with a path to great education and a lifelong career. I want to thank everybody for being here. And I think what we'll do while the media is here, maybe we'll just go around the room real quickly and we'll introduce uh, yourselves. And uh, these are people that have really worked hard on prison reform and lots of other things, but on prison reform. And that's largely what this meeting is about. Governor, please. Well, thank you, Mr. President. I appreciate the opportunity to be here. Uh, we are very pleased with what's happened in Georgia. Uh, we have seen since I became governor a 10% decrease in violent crime in our state, a 20% overall decrease in crime. Uh, we have seen our African-American percentage in our prison system drop significantly. Black American, black males has dropped almost 30%. That's good. Uh, black females dropped about 38.2%. Uh, our African-American commitments to our prison is at the lowest level it has been since 1987. And in states like ours, we have a disproportionate number of minorities in our prison versus our population as a whole. We have found that reentry is a vital part of this. We found that I did a question I asked. I said, what's the most common characteristic of those in our prisons? The answer was 70% of them never graduated from high school. So we immediately concentrated on that. We have significantly beefed up our, our GEDs. We've also brought a private charter school into our system to teach them, give them a real high school diploma. We found that if you give them a, a blue collar skill, you reduce your recidivism rate by 24%. If you give them just the education of getting a high school diploma, uh, it's reduced by 19%. So we have been very successful. We're pleased about it, and we're pleased to share whatever information we have that might be helpful. Good. Thank you, Governor. Thank you very much. Pam? President um, Pam Bond, the Attorney General of Florida, um, thank you for doing this. As a career prosecutor, you see people who go to prison and get out of prison and can't find a job. And how do we expect people to succeed without being able to get a job? And you were just in Tampa. Thank you for that. Um, Tampa Bay Tech supporting jobs for, for young people. And that's what's so important is reentry and being able to get a job and training people on how to be successful. Um, and something we did in Florida shortly after I got elected was we decoupled. If you were a convicted felon, you couldn't get an occupational license. So yeah. how do we expect you to succeed? So thank you for everything you're doing. Thank you, Pam. Thank you very much. Mr. President, John Bell Edwards, and I will tell you, in Louisiana, we're proud of the work we've done. Uh, it's been sentencing reform, prison reform, and a real focus on reentry. And for the first time in 20 years, I can tell you, Louisiana does not have the highest incarceration rate in Good. the nation today. Good. Uh, and it's paying dividends for us, and we're reinvesting the Who savings. Does? Oklahoma. Really? Yes, sir. Uh, but, but we are reinvesting the savings into our reentry program and also into victim services. So we're excited about what we're doing. We're looking forward to sharing that with you. Great. Great. Thank you yes, very sir. much. Thank you, John Bell. Please. Go ahead. Mr. President, uh, Doug Burgum, Governor of North Dakota, thank you for coming to North Dakota last month. Great to have you there. Uh, things are looking good, aren't they? Things are looking great. Yeah. Uh, thanks to a lot of policies from this administration and great cabinet that you have. Uh, as you know, you can't really separate uh, today prison reform and our prison situation from addiction. In North Dakota, 100% of the women that are incarcerated in our prison system have a, a disease of addiction. 85% of the men uh, in our prison have disease of addiction. Uh, and, and we can't solve a health care, a chronic health care problem with punishment. We've got to solve it, treat it like a disease and solve it that way. Right. And, and uh, so I want to also thank you for the work that your administration is doing on the addiction front because it ties uh, directly uh, back into this. And I think we've got a number of innovations we'll be happy to share at this roundtable today. Good. Thanks for inviting us. The, but, you know, in the end, we're trying to create better neighbors, not better prisoners. 98% uh, of the people that go to prison in North Dakota end up coming back out. And so we have to, when they're there, uh, like the other governors have talked about, it's education, it's... Uh, career skills, uh, it's treatment. Those are things we have to focus on. If we can do that, we, we can uh, turn people's lives around and add people to the workforce. We know we need that because we've got so many jobs open in this country. 
Thank you very much, Governor. Ken Paxton, Texas Attorney General. Thank you, Mr. President. This is obviously an important issue to Texas. I think it's an important issue to the nation. And Jared, I appreciate your passion for this issue. 2007, under the leadership of, I think, the greatest governor in my lifetime, he's now Secretary of uh, Energy, is that right? <laughs> Department of Energy. And uh, the president of our uh, top public policy foundation, Brooke Rollins, we passed legislation similar to what Congress is now looking at that has had a dramatic impact on our on our ability to, to take people from prison into productive lives. And, you know, I could cite many statistics, but we were facing spending $2 billion, and we didn't spend the money. We put $241 million into treatment and to uh, helping people find jobs. We've expanded that since, but it's made a tremendous difference. We have not built any more new prisons since then. We've actually closed eight prisons. So it's, it's really made a difference, and I think it can make a difference for the nation. So I look forward to continuing the discussion. How are you doing with your recently filed case? How's that looking? Well, we had a hearing yesterday, and it, I think it went quite well. We'll see what the judge says, but we know we're right on the law and we're right on the Constitution, and so we're confident things are going to go in the right way. It's true. Okay. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. President. Well, I'm Phil Bronton, Mississippi. In 2014, we began our Right on Crime program. We used all the things that Georgia has been successful with. In Texas, I called both of these governors and said, tell me how you did it. I'm a former law enforcement officer. Right. I've worked undercover narcotics cases. I've been out there with the worst of the worst. I've put a lot of people in jail, and some of it was difficult, particularly when I was state auditor and over 100 statewide elected officials and government employees went to jail for white-collar crimes. So we began a really strong program working with the Pew Institute of putting that workforce training program into effect, making sure we looked at addiction, mental health. Uh, mental health challenges within the correctional facilities are, are obviously rampant. Uh, also trying to make prisons a drug-free free zone uh, uh, and a crime-free zone within that prison so you can't, your life can't be threatened every day, you can't be attacked in prison, you can't have access to drugs and be rehabilitated. And then finally the faith-based organization. Uh, it takes a change of heart. Now, I've been around a lot of people who are in jail and if their hearts aren't changed, their lives will not be changed. So prison ministries, all of those things that government doesn't like to admit to, to that works, right. works. And so when we bring faith back into the prison system, uh, prisoners have hope again. And that worked uh, better for us than anything we uh, could have done, another reentry program, getting them jobs, getting them a driver's license, keeping them connected with their family so that they have something to work towards when they're getting out of prison. And, and, and I can tell you, I had to call a lot of my Republicans into the governor's office and convince them to vote for this bill. They were worried it was soft on crime. They were hesitant about what they were going to tell their, uh, their people back home. And I said, you tell them to call me. Because crime is down 6%, we have 3,000 less inmates, and we saved $40 million since 2014. Right. And you can do the same thing, and Jared, thank you for your leadership. Thank, thank you, Mr. You, President. Secretary? Mr. President, um, I'd like to make two, two points. First, as you mentioned, the economy is doing incredibly well. For the first time since we've been keeping records, we have more open jobs than we have people to fill those jobs. And so these reentry programs are needed for the economy. We have jobs ready and waiting for individuals from the deep prison. Second, I'd like to, to follow up on what so many governors have said. These programs work. As, as you know and others at the table know, I was U.S. Attorney in Miami. And when you talk with the law enforcement communities, what they will tell you is that these programs foster public safety. When someone leaves prison, the best that could happen for them is for them to find a job. The best that could happen for society is for them to find a job and start contributing to society rather than go back to the ways of crime. So this is very much a win-win for the individual, for the safety of the community, and for the economy of the nation. If we have individuals that are going from a prison system where the taxpayer is funding the system to contributing members of society that are helping this economic growth. And so we're working with various governors. We put out a uh, request for a proposal. We got so many, so many applications from various governors uh, on programs that are uh, very much outside the box that um, uh, this fall we intend to put out another request for proposals to fund another round of reentry efforts. And so, uh, I want to thank the governors, and I 
I want to thank uh, all that are working on this issue. It's very important. Well, you've been great, and uh, your health care plan is going along beautifully. That is really uh, doing something. It's, uh, are you surprised by the numbers you're hearing? It is. I, uh, just this morning, I read an article um, uh, mentioning a number of uh, associations around the country, I believe right. one in Wisconsin, um, uh, certainly one in Nevada, that are already uh, forming these. And uh, just today, I was talking with some of the governors here uh, about uh, the various activity in their states. And so it's moving very nicely. It's been great. Thank you, Alex. Very much. Thank you. Rip, go ahead, Rip. Well, I would be ha thank you so much, uh, Mr. <laughs> President. We're so happy to be here. I tell you, I am overwhelmed and so encouraged. These governors are real innovators and they're entrepreneurs. And what they have done is this idea of the laboratories of democracy, that in the states we have moved so many issues forward that now at the federal level, which I'm so honored to become part of your team, but at the federal level we can now see what happened in the states, what's working, what is basically lifting people to a better life, the forgotten men and women of this country, and having lived it in Texas beside these two great men for uh, more than a decade, we've seen firsthand how this changes lives, how right. it gives people second chances, how it puts communities back together and keeps families together. So thank you for the opportunity. Thank you. Well, thank you. Mr. President, thank you for... Uh, bringing her on board. I think uh, you're, you're seeing on a daily basis uh, what a talent uh, she is dealing with these issues that are really important. Two things that I want to share with the table, with you, and with the, uh, with the general public. And, and, and one is it's because of those tax policies, because of those regulatory policies that uh, uh, you push through, we got more people working in America than ever before. And, Because if, if these programs are to work when, when the folks get out uh, of, of prison, or if they don't go to prison to begin with, and that's our real goal. Uh, and, and I want to share that these governors around here, every one of them are courageous. Uh, because I heard it when we were doing this back in Texas in the, in the early and mid-2000s, that, you know, well, Perry, we thought you were tough on crime. Um, nobody ever got me confused with being soft on crime. You know, I, I sign more execution orders than probably any governor in the history of this country. Mm -hmm. And that's a sad thing, but it's a fact. So I'm not soft on crime. But I like to say we were smart on crime in Texas because we put these programs into place and young people whose lives would be destroyed if, if we sent them on to prison and that, that's where they really become professional criminals. Mm -hmm and we never allowed that to happen. We gave them a second chance. And so Texans now really understand it. We shut down eight prisons, saving some three plus billion dollars a year in prison costs. And conservatives look at that now and go, that was smart on crime. Mm -hmm. and, and, and Pam, that's what, that's, what, that's what people will say about you, Mr. President, is number one, you've created this climate where people can have a job and have hope for the future. And, and, and I'll finish with this, is that you pass that piece of legislation uh, that, that does clearly reforms the prison system. And, and I will suggest to you from my perspective that the sentencing reform is, is part of that as well. Mm -hmm. and, and then you have the ability uh, to show this country. And then these laboratories of innovation, uh, you know, when Doug goes back up to North Dakota and he puts in for his state the right programs, and, and it's not, you know, top down, but you've sent the right message that, fellas, here's the way to reform your prison system. We're not going to be in the way. We're not going to be a hurdle for you. Then you all figure out how to do it the rest of the way. And this country, I mean, can in be incredibly proud of what they're doing for the next generation of people to come along. And, and these governors are going to be a real key part of that. So. Well, thank you, Rick. Very good. Thank you very much. How's it going energy-wise? <laughs> I, 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 I will tell you, I don't know how it could be much better. <laughs> uh, the, the, the people around the world, we're selling LNG now into 30 countries on five continents. Um, John, a lot of that Louisiana <laughs> gas is, is headed to a lot of places. Doug, uh, number two oil producer in the, in the world. 
uh, or I should say the United States, uh, only behind the state of Texas. Uh, <laughs> We're catching you. Yes, sir. Yes, <laughs> yes. And we want you to. Come on. Yeah. Give us your best shot. But the, things are going good, sir. I mean, it's, it is a uh, massive job being created. We got the opportunity to, uh, you know, I, I don't want to get us off track here, but uh, oil and gas infrastructure, uh, if, there, if there's one thing that we uh, collectively, and these governors will tell you that as well, that uh, will produce it, getting it out of this country is the challenge right now. Mm -hmm. yeah. Well, we've become, as you know, number one in the world over just the last short period of time. So we've made it a lot easier. Indeed. And yet environmentally perfect, environmentally really good. But we've become number one in the world. And we're now a net exporter, which nobody thought they'd ever hear. And we're doing a lot of good things for a lot of other countries, too. So thank you very much. You're doing a great job. Thank you. Matt? Mr. President, I just want to thank you again for convening this, not just once, not just twice, but on multiple occasions. I had a chance to meet a number of folks around this table. A comment was made early on, I think, by you in your introductory comments about the fact that this is a war where people can be lined up on the same side. And the most powerful thing about this, and something I hope those of you in the media appreciate, I look at guys like John Bell Edwards uh, in Louisiana represents a different party than I do in Kentucky in terms of our political affiliation. But this is something that we're very much of like mind on. Mm -hmm. uh, and I think this transcends anything political. And, it's, and again, I tip my hat to you for not only on this issue, but on others, bringing things to the political forefront that aren't political. Mm -hmm. They've historically been ignored because they weren't political, and nobody got any points politically by doing them, but that they were the right thing to do. And as, as some who have gone around this table have touched on, it isn't just the fact that it's smart on crime or that it's financially prudent, because it is all those things, but it's the right thing to do, just the human dignity of giving people, this is a land of second chances and of opportunity to rebuild your life. Uh, and you are giving us, through this conversation and the kind of things you're pushing from the federal level, the encouragement from the bottom up to give millions and millions of Americans a chance uh, at redemption. And it's, and it's, I think, the greatest gift we can offer people. And it's something that, again, for all the economic reasons we've just mentioned, we desperately need. These are able-bodied men and women. 95 to 97 percent of the two million currently in prison are going to get out. And what are they going to do? Are we going to give them a path to stay out? Or are they going to go right back in? And some of the things we've done in Kentucky is literally start training programs inside of the prison system. Because one of the things we do, I have two twins that are going off to college in the next couple of weeks. And every one of them, from the beginning they get to college, they have a guidance counselor that's helping them chart their path. I truly think it's something we need to do within our prison system. Because we're spending just as much for every person in a prison system as we are for a kid in a college classroom. Mm -hmm. And why not give them a path for them personally to make sure they don't come back to this place, but that they go out and become productive, tax-paying citizens who contribute and become good mothers and fathers and, and community members. Uh, these are the kind of things that this will afford us the chance to do. And I, again, I truly appreciate this. It's something personally uh, that I have a passion for and for you and your administration. And Jared, really, kudos to you because you've done such a stellar job of bringing this to the forefront and, and gathering us together. Uh, and I'm grateful to the two of you uh, for making this possible. Well, thank you, Matt. And I have to say we have tremendous political support. It a little mm -hmm. bit surprises me. I thought that when we started this journey about a year ago, I thought we would not have a lot of political support. We'd have to convince people. Uh, we have great political support. You see what's happening. Uh, people that I would least suspect are behind it 100 percent. So that's a good thing. Thank you all for being here. Thank you all very much. Thank you. Okay. Thank you very much. Mr.